Hi all, and welcome back to The Millennial Cynic with me, Sarah. I hope you're all keeping well. Today, I want to talk about the past week or two in Irish politics and the fallout that has followed, along with the growing calls for an election. So it all started a little over a week ago when Fine Gael TD Joe McHugh resigned the party whip after saying he couldn't in good conscience vote with the government in favour of the MICA redress legislation. He pointed to the limited time given to debate the bill as the last straw. His constituency, Donegal, has been blighted by the MICA issue and those affected by these defective blocks in the North West have not been satisfied with the government response to the issue in which people's homes are quite literally crumbling around them. So Joe McHugh decided he had enough and resigned the whip. Was that because he actually cares about his constituents and has a conscience? Or was it to try and save his reputation in the face of overwhelming backlash from those affected by this issue? I'll let you be the judge, but we will talk more about this later. So what was the fallout from this resignation? Well, it meant that the Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, Green coalition government lost their dull majority, down to 79 seats. And this in turn prompted speculation that Sinn Féin, the largest opposition party, and it's important to remember that part, the largest opposition party, would table a motion of no confidence in the government. And so they did, as expected. What followed was a media and government circus filled with mudslinging and accusations, accusations of time-wasting and of it being nothing more than a cynical political stunt. And the media happily towed this line with one bizarre opinion piece on the Irish Independent website by Maria Cahill, behind a paywall of course, insinuating that Sinn Féin seeking to table a motion of no confidence was, and I quote, a hallmark of the party's opportunistic, cynical approach to politics, and that this was somehow akin to Boris Johnson and his way of doing things. As I said, it was behind a paywall, but that was the blurb to get people interested. And I said, no thanks. But this media and political reaction is where I really want to start today, because countless tweets later, and I still haven't found a good reason why the government would be so angry at this motion. Fear, perhaps? The fear of knowing that they would actually have to engage with independent TDs and perhaps barter an agreement for their support? Even though Michal Martin said he wouldn't do that? Fear that they might not survive? They comfortably did. So was it fear then? Or just disdain for the democratic political process that might show them scrambling to survive? Whatever the reason, it was relentless. In the days leading up to the vote, more and more government TDs and ministers came forward to show their disdain for Sinn Féin's motion, deriding it as pointless and simply a stunt. But this is demonstrably a lie. The sitting government just lost its majority. This is a fact. A good opposition would be foolish to sit back and allow that government to continue without testing its foundations. If Sinn Féin did not table a motion of no confidence, then its voters would be asking why. The other opposition parties would surely also be asking why, and perhaps they would have taken the impetus and lodged the motion themselves in an effort to shine for the electorate. But the biggest issue I have with the government's moaning, and let's be honest here, it amounts to nothing more than moaning, is that if the roles were reversed, you could bet your entire life savings that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael would do the exact same thing. And yet here they are, trying to act holier than thou. This is what opposition is supposed to do. Fine Gael know this well, having tabled a number of these no-confidence motions in the wake of the great financial crash. Pot needs to be introduced to the kettle, it seems. Now, in order to survive the vote, it would appear that government parties spoke to the independents. And if you believe me, Hall Martin, that is all they did. Talk. No, 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 don't go looking at Mark McSharry's Twitter or Facebook page for anything that would amount to a deal being made. No, 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 no. Michal said they only spoke to people. But speaking about independent TDs or those outside the party whip, shall we come back to Joe McHugh for a moment? 
Yeah, I, I think we should. I think we should come back to Joe for a moment. So let's remind ourselves again. He resigned the party whip over the MICA legislation. He also said back in May that he would not be contesting the next general election, whenever that may be. So which way did he vote? Well, in the days prior to the vote, he said the following. He said he will not be what he termed hastening Sinn Féin's pursuit of power. He went on to say, I do not believe they have any credibility when it comes to governing and furthermore, I have no confidence in Sinn Féin's ability to deal with the MICA issue. Now, I have a couple of issues here. One, this is a vote of no confidence in the government, not a vote of confidence in Sinn Féin. Two, he resigned the party whip because he could not stand over the proposed MICA redress scheme, which it would be natural to assume means he doesn't have faith in his own government's ability to address the MICA issue. Yet he decided to vote with the government because he feels Sinn Féin will not adequately deal with MICA, even though Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and the Greens are the ones failing to adequately deal with MICA now. I mean, does this make sense to anyone else? Answers on a postcard. So Joe McHugh won't be contesting the next election, calls the loss of the majority over the government's handling of MICA, says Sinn Féin won't handle MICA very well, so votes confidence in the government, thus helping to avoid a no-confidence vote, which would have ensured an election much quicker than the government would like or expect. Hmm. The cynic in me is screaming something. I, I, I wonder what it could be. Uh, I guess I'll just leave that up to your imagination. So back to the motion of no confidence and the derision of government parties at the temerity of Sinn Féin democratically testing their standing. You'd imagine, based on all the potshots and moaning by government TDs and ministers, that they'd want to just get past this motion as quickly as possible, so as to get back to the work they need to get done. As they kept repeating, this was a waste of time, so I assume they wanted to get back to work, right? I mean, before they had off on their holliers, obviously. But with no hint of irony, what did the government do then? Oh, they go and call for a motion of confidence vote. So much delicious ironing right there. This motion means they get more speaking time. Time they claimed was valuable. I mean, I suppose time is valuable when you want to toot your own horn. So they spend time gleefully patting their own backs and sniggering at the opposition for their apparent failure with this motion. But we see the truth. Hashtag we want an election has been trending in Ireland for the past week or so. And although Twitter may not be the best litmus test, when it comes to politics, it is a handy window into the eyes of the ordinary voter. And the ordinary voter is not happy. The government may feel that Sinn Féin's motion was a damp squib, but it gave voters a valuable insight into who can be bought and sold, who is only there for their own gain, and who has morals worthy of being voted for. Very valuable insights for those who care to look. When I think of elections, I tend to come back to something Leslie Nope, a fictional politician from the incredible Parks and Recreation TV show. Now, seriously, it's up there with Frasier and Peak Simpsons as one of the best TV shows of all time, in my humble opinion. So give it a watch. Anyway, it's something Leslie asked when celebrating a year in office. Are you better off now than you were a year ago? And I keep coming back to this when thinking of the last 11 years of Fine Gael in government, or back as far as the financial crash of 08. Am I better off? Well, I mean, in my personal life, sure, but financially? Economically? You know, the things the government have a hand in? No, not even slightly. In fact, I'm worse off now. Before, there was always a glimmer of hope. But that... That has long extinguished with this government at the helm. And I don't believe I'm alone in feeling this way. The we want an election hashtag is testament to that. You now have people who would never have voted Sinn Féin changing their mind because the alternative is abject failure. We have a housing crisis that has only gotten worse at every turn. 
Every single action taken by the government has done nothing but increase prices. HAP being a prime example, it didn't lower the ceiling, it raised the floor. Same with other schemes to help people buy. Tinkering at the fringes, but always making things worse. We have a teaching brain drain occurring out of Dublin. More and more young teachers cannot afford to live in Dublin, and so are moving out, which is leaving schools in Dublin short-staffed. This will not stop with teachers, by the way, and you can check out my video on irrelevant housing advice for more on that. We have a healthcare brain drain occurring too, this time out of the country completely. We have highly skilled nurses and junior doctors leaving in droves because they aren't being paid what they need to survive, never mind what they actually deserve. We have hospital waiting lists so long and unmanageable that we have now outsourced medical procedures to other EU countries. Most recently, news came of a scheme whereby you can head to a new hospital in Spain to get a procedure done and be refunded by the HSE when you return. Oh, and if you can't afford the upfront fees, fear not. Our government has found a willing middleman in the form of our credit unions. We have a cost of living crisis which is affecting more and more people every day and will crucify us come winter. I've also discussed this in a previous episode, unimaginatively titled The Rising Cost of Living. But now to add to this, we are seeing incredible acts of gouging and profiteering here in Ireland, with no legislation or laws in place to curtail this. Hotels and car rental being the most high profile gougers, but it's everywhere. Some price increases you can understand, but when it's everything and the increases are outstripping the reasons behind it, nah, nah, that's just ineffectual government policy at play, yet again. Add all of this up and is it any wonder why we want an election is trending on Twitter? Is it any wonder the latest polls show another increase for Sinn Féin and another decrease for government parties? Is it any wonder people who would usually never vote Sinn Féin are becoming so desperate for change that that's exactly what they will do when given the chance? I'm going to have to disagree with Kylie Minogue for a moment and say in this instance no, It's not better the devil you know. We've been living with the devil we know for quite long enough, thank you very much, and we know what to expect. And we are fed up with it. In the words of the late great Owen Hart, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. The government can bury their heads in the sand, they can pat themselves on the back all night long for surviving this particular challenge, they can run around with their fingers in their ears while going, la 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 la, I'm not listening and continue to ignore the obvious, the electorate has run out of rope. The electorate has run out of patience. We want an election. Thanks again for joining me once again, and if you happen to enjoy my ramblings, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more from me. And if that's not enough, I'm also on Twitter, where you can read my ramblings in real time. The link is in the description below. Thanks again for listening. Hope to see you soon. Slong of all.